Alright guys, and welcome back to Green Tide 40K. Today, I am testing out a new camera that I got, which is actually a new phone because apparently I was allowed to upgrade, and I asked for whichever one I could get that had a really good camera. So this is one they suggested. And I also got a new headset here, so I have different audio. So let me know what you guys think. How is the audio? Is it better? I'm hoping so. We'll find out after I'm done shooting this video. But anyway, today we are going to talk about a conversion that I did. This is my big track that I built out of a Rhino and just some spare bits. When I first bought my uh, first few set of boys, I had somebody give me these pieces here. I had just this block, a pipe inside, and then just the uh, very skeleton frame of the Rhino. And so I was trying to figure out what to do and what to build. And I wasn't too sure. And I eventually came up with this. Now I painted it as well not too long after I started. So please don't mind the checkers. But I kind of don't want to repaint it. I just want to fix it up. As you can see over here my driver is missing his arm. Which was an axe raised to the sky. He uh... He's been through a lot of battles. So what I do with this guy is I run him with a Super Scorcha, which is what we have here, then two Scorches on the side. So he's nothing but a flame mobile. So let's talk about this Super Scorcha that I built. So what I did was I took three burners and put them all together on the end. And the piping from those burners is connected to hair ties. So I just took the end, glued the hair tie in, wrapped it around so that they're all going into this drilled hole over here to get the fuel. Same on this side here. So all it is is just a, uh, a bare tube. Then it's this wire around it is actually a pencil case from the dollar store. I just grabbed and bent and put together and I just put everything else on top around it. And uh, this is how my Super Scorcher looks. So let's go over how I built this guy. Obviously it is a rhino skeleton. And so what I did was I took the sides and I cut holes in it so that I could have my Grot Sponsons in there did that as well on this side here. Figured that would give it a little bit more character. And this guy's my favorite right here. He's just hanging out behind that Scorcha, just loving life. And what I did for these is I took uh, a Grot Zooka from the Kill a Can set and also a Scorcha and I just jammed the two of them together. I thought that looked kind of cool. And it worked out fairly well as far as I'm concerned. Same on this side here. What I really like to do with him is, since he's got a 24 inch range on the flamer with uh, 4D3 auto hits, one of the funnest things that i found you can do is try to burn flyers out of the sky. Nobody expects it and it's hilarious when you can pull it off. It's a lot of fun just to try and it's a lot of fun to see your opponent's face. Now what I did back here for the driver is he's pretty short. Don't mind the dust. As you can tell, I don't play him too often. Now, he's pretty short, and he did not reach. So I grabbed a tire from one of the kids' toys and uh, glued him on top of there. And so he's using a shooter arm. I just cut the hand and turned it over as a steering wheel. Now, that steering wheel looks like it is going to cut you up, but it works. You jam it on there. And you don't need to worry about anything else in that regard. I don't use this guy too often because he is a fairly large point sink. But when I do, I like to fill him up in the back with six burners. That way it's nothing but a rolling barbecue. And it uh, never gets charged. And if it does, it uh, does quite a bit of damage on the way in. But it is a massive bullet magnet and you have to keep that in mind. Now for my favorite part of this model 
is have to be the tracks. Now, I was thinking, what would an orc like? He's got tr tank treads, just aren't loud enough. So bare, large steel grinding on whatever surface they're on. It will be a lot louder, especially if we're talking rock and terrain. So what I did is obviously a bike chain. I just cut it to size, wrapped it around, and uh, took a lot of patience with the glue. As you can see here, it's not so clean looking. It's not sharp either though. So that you don't have to worry about wrecking a table or anything. But I did not too worried about cleaning, cleaning it up, just because, you know, it looks beat. Like over here, you know, I think it looks fine. I don't not too worried about it. You can see the other track right through there. But if you guys want to do this uh, kind of conversion yourself with chain, all you need are two things. One, you need some bike chain. And what you want to do with this chain is when you get it, grab a large container that you could fill with hot soapy water and put the whole chain in there and shake it and shake it and shake it. Let it sit for quite a while, like an hour, two hours. Dump it out and repeat. Lots of soap and water, lots of hot water. Shake it and then you dry it extremely well so it doesn't rust. That way all the grease and oil is off and your super glue or whatever you're using will actually hold. So once you have those, uh, the chain all cleaned up, you're also going to want a set of bolt cutters. Now I've tried a whole bunch of different ways to cut my chain and bolt cutters is the only way you're gonna do it without uh, a ton of work and a huge pain. I've tried using tin snips of all sorts and it is not gonna happen. It is a bolt cutter or bust when it comes to cutting this stuff. So let me know what you guys think of this conversion. Is, do you like it? Do you not like it? It's a little bit shorter than an actual big track. So when it comes to measurements, it's measured from the end of the scorcha and not the edge of the track. That's the proper size. So that's for measurement reasons in games. That's where we go from. And I tell my opponent the same thing. Uh, so he is aware, and uh, yeah, besides that though, I, I kind of like the way it turned out. I really enjoy having the grots and the sides, kind of being my sponsons out there and fixing it up as we go. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to paint when I was first starting out. Um, one of the things uh, I was really happy with was how the edge of the burn has turned out with the red and the yellow and stuff. It's super simple when I'm looking at it now, but at the time I, I really quite was proud of that when I did it. So I was uh, still learning on how to do all this stuff and how to hobby. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, once again, if you want, go check out Instagram. And I post pictures of my painting stuff there. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.